All right, so uh, let me just kind of, I'm going to talk for a few minutes, giving you a background of how we got up to this time. Um, for those of you who've been reading my emails and such, um, some of this will be repetitive, but this kind of gave everybody a baseline of where we're at at this point and where we need to go in the next few weeks as a uh, school committee and district. So, um, you know, updating from last week, it was a crazy week. Um, we started off with canceling trips at the beginning of the week, then to canceling our our big drama production of Annie and a basketball tournament. And, you know, it was all kind of chaos. And then on Friday, um, we really kind of got lit up as um, we got uh, went from one conference call to another with the state. And then we had people doing things opposite of what the state was asking us to do. And in the end, we ended up closing for two weeks. It's kind of a big, it's a, it's a good story for me to tell um, some other time. And then on Sunday evening, after another meeting I had with the commissioner, the governor, um, shortly thereafter, closed the schools um, for three weeks. Um, I do want to, before I go into more details, I do want to thank Meg Birch, our nurse leader, and our curriculum directors, Kim and Sarah, from behind the scenes last week. It was a very, very long week, and they kind of became my, my team in my office as we try to um, handle each one of the problems that came up, and we kind of were ahead of everybody else in the state, and so we would make a decision with all the stress and then the state would make the decision. And that was, um, it was nice that they kind of confirmed our decisions, but in the, in the end, it was, a, it was stressful at the time. So I want to thank them. And I want to thank all the staff members across the board, um, all our teachers, all our administrators. Um, let me shut my phone off. Um, and for their hard work and being supportive throughout the week. Um, there's a lot of moving pieces here, as you will see in a few moments. Um, so about the closure, Basically, what the state said is that, you know, we're closing for three weeks. Right now, the maximum number of days that we will be going to school will be going to the 185th day on the calendar. So that will put us at, um, I believe, June 18th. And three of the days this week are actually snow days that we are going to be using and rolling them toward the end of the, being put to the end of the year. Um, that's if we um, are only going for three weeks. You know, when we spoke with the commissioner, um, he kind of was very um, really talking about how there's other scenarios that if we're not back after three weeks, then maybe we'll be scenario number two, which is maybe we'll be back by the 1st of May. If we come back by the 1st of May, um, you know, he's at that point, we're talking about MCAS testing and those kind of things. He's hoping that we'll get a waiver from the federal government. As you may know that the MCAS is a, a federal government mandate. Um, that we have that, that type of assessment. Um, he talked about waiving that and um, really trying to do like seven weeks of strong schooling to finish off the school year. The third possible scenario, um, depending on how this all unfolds, is we are closed for the remainder of the school year. Um, again, those are, as you probably all sit back and read the news, those are all, all realistic um, possibilities, you know, looking ahead. Um, again, the state testing, um, I got a little agenda here. The state testing is, um, the MCAS for 10th grade is, has been, you know, canceled or, or postponed at this point because it was supposed to happen during these three weeks. Um, and the length of the school year, they did talk about, you know, if, if this thing does drag on for two months, will they have us go to the end of June? Those are things that they could change on a dime. Um, but right now they're saying that we're going to the 185th day, which again is June 18th. Um, we start earlier being a Western Mass school because we, we plan on snow days. Eastern Mass um, many of those schools start later. So their 185th day may be later in June. So we're going to see where, where, the, where that goes. Um, all right. So that, that's so basically that's kind of where we're at with the school closure. Um, I'm just going to open, keep it by section. If you have any questions as we go, I went up the chat that the chat line is that bubble in the right hand corner. Just simply write in your question on the topic as we're going through. And then I can I can you know, at the end of when I'm talking about each section, just try to answer those questions. So we kind of you know, have to save them all to the end. Um, it is also a lot easier. You'll see going from one speaker to the next is not is not simple. Um, you don't do this daily. So it's, it's easier to get your questions out that way. And that is also recorded. Anything you put in the chat box is part of the recorded session here. So um, if you wanna keep those on the up and up. All right, so the school's response. So uh, once we once we closed, um, 
we immediately, you know, I kind of looked at the, the hierarchy of needs um, and what we had to do as a school district. And the first one was to make sure we put in a meal system. Unlike um, some, some urban districts that have meal systems that take over during breaks, summer vacation, um, you know, we have, um, we don't have that in place. So, you know, we started on Monday. Um, we decided that I'm going to open up breakfast and lunches to all of the four towns, even though all four towns don't qualify for breakfast. Um, we called every single family, the, the secretaries, thank you to the secretaries in each of the elementary school. Um, we will, um, we asked them to call every single one on the free and do lunch, free and reduced lunch and asked if they would be needing that service. And we also are prepared to offer delivery of those lunches. So we're delivering the lunch with the next day's breakfast. Um, after that, we then opened it up to anybody, any child under the age of 18 in our district um, who may need um, who may need food um, during this you know, times. And this may change. And we know that over the coming weeks, as um, different people are being laid off and, and, and things are changing in their homes, maybe that may expand. I've also reached out to the community um, and to post on the websites as well to let anybody who's not in our schools but are also under the age of 18 in need of food um, be able to get that. Uh, additionally, I've also reached out to the senior programs through our towns waiting for that to happen. Um, um, sorry, I'm also the manager of this meeting, so if people do things, it pops up in the middle of my screen. Um, so, you know, we, we reached out to that. The cost of a breakfast is $1.12, and the cost for lunch is $1.47. So I thought that was really important to hanging up on this cell phone because I think you're online now. Um, and like I said, it was uh, the costs are 112 for breakfast and 147 for lunch. And, and so, you know, I want to put that out to the seniors because um, I understand that, um, you know, another vulnerable group during this time. And if they, if the senior groups want to jump onto that service, they can. Um, any questions on, on food service? So put those in as well. Um, since I was um, here, we, we, the question came in, should we, should we and can we cancel ABLE break? Um, that came in twice. I, I would say sit tight right now on that. Um, it is certainly something that we can look at. My gut right now is that three weeks is going to be the beginning of a longer term. Um, also, um, and when we talk about teacher contracts later on, if we cancel it for break, we're going to have to relook at that. Anything's on the table, um, but there's a good possibility we might be you know, still in closure over April break. So I would say we kind of see, we see where the, where this thing kind of turns over the next, over the next week, we're going to get more and more information as there's more and more tests. And we're going to see what kind of strain is put on our health system. If it's going to be the, the, the die, the, uh, the really bad numbers that they're predicting or the more conservative numbers that we're all hoping for on our healthcare system. So that's my there, but this is something that is you are the committee, so we can steer this another direction. But that's my my thought there. All right, I'm going to move on to my next part. And again, if you if you type again, type in question as we go. If I hit something or I miss miss speaking on something, um, uh, or want clarity or something like that, feel free. Um, the next thing we did, we also brought in our custodial staffs to all the buildings, and they've been cleaning since Monday. I'm just kind of getting us a new base zero, you know, as of, you know, I haven't seen the numbers today. As of yesterday, there were no cases in Franklin County. Um, but as you know, the other fear is that there are a lot of cases out there and that we just don't have enough testing. So, um, but however, you know, we are cleaning our buildings and then we're also kind of listing up projects. We'll talk about um, paying and the staffing. I'm going to save that to the end because I have some documents that are out there. The next thing we've been working on and are getting released, getting ready to release to the teachers with the teachers tomorrow is that we're looking for continuing education opportunities at home. Um, we sent out a doc and I sent it out to all of you probably around four or five this afternoon regarding our elementary continuing education and our secondary continuation education plans. Now, these plans are not in place of school. They are basically um, extensions um, of school that we can try to get kids to do things at home, um, to continue learning, to so their academics don't 
um, you know, come to a stop. Um, so that's kind of the, in the spirit of it. So far, the teacher feedback on this has been great. Teachers have already been reaching out um, to students in their classes, um, not just in, just in support and like, you know, talking about continuing reading. We're hoping to extend that as we, um, as we move forward. Um, just giving different um, fun activities, not just like, you know, go read for a half hour, but, you know, maybe do a scavenger hunt with the family. Um, maybe, you know, go outside and identify things of spring, um, you know, and then come back and write it in a journal, you know, based on, you know, we're talking from pre-K all the way to AP courses um, and jumping through their AP courses, you know, they're looking at that as well. The AP is about whether or not the testing is going to be when it is. Um, I believe they put a, Allison, I think you're on, you can kind of write in with the, the, up, the update on that is, um, but I believe they put that on hold as well. But so you have different kind of levels all the way through. And that's the hardest part that we have to deal with. We have different levels of technology. We have different levels of which families can assist, whether or not they're at home with their children during the day. Um, you have different grade levels, um, who has devices, who doesn't. We're trying to track that down and um, basically we'll roll out, depending on if this goes on, um, as well, rolling out um, our iPads that are used for classrooms, get them home to students who may need them because they don't have a computer at home. And we're also, you know, there's a lot of great um, low rates and free introductory packages being put out by uh, cable companies right now to be supportive um, in this effort. And we're getting that information out to people as well. Um, so there's a lot going on in that, and I can kind of go on and on, but it's, um, you know, read through the document we have out there today. Tomorrow I have um, back to back to back to back meetings of this type that we're doing tonight with all the staffs to, um, you know, do virtual uh, conversation regarding how we're going to roll this out. Um, there's going to be trips and concerns and things that are going to go right and things that are going to go wrong. I read this um, great article from out of, out of China about how they dealt with education. And they're really, their main advice was, you know, you know, be prepared to modify your plan as you go. So what, what you think is going to be, um, is going to happen um, will change and just be to be prepared to be fluid. So, um, yeah, all right. So um, questions on that. Um, Jessica Corwin kind of jumped in and basically said there were five presumptive cases in Franklin County today per the recorder. So I stand corrected. It is amongst us at this point. Um, and the AP College Board will be releasing information on the 20th and regarding extension or alternative testing sites are being discussed. So, you know, looking at those, those kiddos who are really wanting those, um, those courses for credit um, in colleges. And when I say the word credit, it also talks about what are we going to do about seniors and graduating? We're working on that, but that's kind of a wait and see. If this is a three-week thing, again, it looks very differently than this is a, a, um, a May 1 thing or remainder of the year thing. Um, um, so we will have to modify the good news on, you know, credits and that kind of stuff. I don't believe we have any students that need to pass the MCAS in order to graduate. So we don't have to worry about that one thing, which I know other districts are struggling with about how they, to meet that, that, that item. All right. So that's where I'm at as update to what we've been working on. Um, now I have a list of stuff that we need to be working on, meaning the, the, the committees. So any questions on anything I said there? I'll give you a chance to type away. Right. Okay, so the next thing that we need to talk about is I met um, briefly with the chairs earlier this week about um, the first kind of emergency meeting about how do I get through the week? Um, you know, the one thing that we aren't is with a 25 person um, committee overall, or, you know, in, in five committees that we aren't nimble um, in those kind of things. So I hope people can appreciate and, um, and support the chairs that supported me. They basically said, take care of this week, Darius, regarding pay and that kind of thing. Um, and then we'll um, bring everything else back to the school committee um, moving forward. So basically, because we had multiple school snow days this week, it was kind of easy in the sense that we, those are being pushed to the end of the year and it's not really a um, whole lot of you know uh, money being moved around and, and decisions around money. I did decide to pay everyone for the week um, outside of the snow days and um, that goes across the board. So you know we end up doing that for this week, but we are gonna be looking at teachers in IA, MOA. I did send a draft out to you 
Um, for those of you who are on the, who aren't uh, computer savvy, you can on your screens, you know, you can move around and open different applications. Just don't close this one. So you can look at um, that as we're as I'm talking to you. You just won't see this beautiful thing. Yeah. So you're supposed to see lots of laughter, and not hear laughter. All right. So um, the first, the 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 MOA draft, and I'm turning sideways because I have everything digitally next to me. Is still. Um, it's still under uh, under construction, as you can as you can see. Um, basically, the outlining of it is that um, you know. I guess I'll read through each part of it, and I hope that's not too painful. I mean, I guess people can chime in text wise, and this is they go into some uncharted territories. Um, but if a staff member is subject to a mandatory quarantine by a governing body, said staff member will be placed on paid administrative leave for the duration of the required leave. Employees placed on paid administrative leave will receive full benefits and otherwise be held harmless. Paid administrative leave will not be deducted from the cumulative leave. Okay, so that's kind of where we got to kind of uh, learn the language there. Um, should the worksite be closed for any reason, the committee shall place all employees on that worksite on a paid administrative leave. Employees paid on administrative leave will receive full pay benefits and otherwise held harmless. Oh, sorry, I started by saying that the, the Frontier um, School and Union 38 committees agree the following protocols and procedures will apply to all employees during the current state of emergency concerning the COVID-19 virus. So this is for um, during this um, state of emergency. Now I have to tell you, you know, going through this, um, I probably am poor sometimes about setting the stage on some of these things. It's been great working with our union leadership on this. They've really, um, um, I think, you know, not only stepped up and made themselves available to me on Friday, they stayed late to talk about some of the problems and concerns I had, and how we were going to lay things out. They then again met with me today um, um, on this as well. So it's it just letting you know that they're, they've been great so far. Um, I said so far, but you're going to be great all the way through. And we also um, really, and I've, I've told them, if we have to modify, if there's things that we don't, we don't predict that um, I think we're really, we are talking in a way that, um, you know, if things change, we we may have to make other changes. Um, um, Ken kind of wrote that I think the draft seems to cover most of the basin is clear for all involved. So the question, um, the question that uh, has you know has come to me regarding this and um, the uh, uh, non uh, non union staff members is that right now they're paid for quarantined. But they are not paid for. Um, they are. They're going to be required to use sick days should they become sick. Okay, with the COVID virus, um, there were uh, members of staff of, of both of the uh, uh, of the uh, non-union staff that were concerned that you know I could be home with a spouse, being quarantined with that spouse, and then once I receive and get the virus, that then I would have to use sick days moving forward. Um, so looking for thoughts on that again, again, we're discussing this tonight, not voting this tonight. So you can be able to walk away and have some chats, um, you know, with yourself and, um, other, you know, members, um, obviously following open meeting law, um, about that in chats with me. Um, basically right now there are members of our staffing, which I'll get to the other one in a minute that are coming in and going to work. Um, and maybe I should go through that and then we can, we go through that and then, we'll, then we can talk about any question on the um, MOA before I go? And that's for all four of our unions. Um, the one thing that is different than some of the other MOAs is that we are talking about they are going to do some hour, four hours of a day of remote work. Um, they're not just, the teachers and IAs are not just staying at home. Um, they are you know, continue to stay involved. And this is reaching out to the students and to families and um, planning different things and, you know, kind of motivating people along through this time, which I think is, um, if we can do that well, it's going to be, it's, we're going to make a positive out of a negative here. Um, I'm excited about that. Seeing no comments coming in there, um, I'm going to go over to the, what am I looking for? The 
basically the agreement, we kind of wrote agreement between all non-union personnel. Now remember non-union personnel, we have a lot of different categories here. And so I'm gonna take it through, but um, the biggest one, can, you know, if you read through the top part of that, um, the administration, so this week, I am closing the building on Friday. Um, everybody came in, put in a long, it's been a long, hectic week. Um, and then I'm also trying to do some some balancing of, you know, um, people being able to get get out of the workplace and get home and um, that kind of thing. So the building's gonna be closed on Friday um, for everybody who's in this, in this group that has worked this week. Um, and then starting next week, custodians, um, as you can read through there, we're basically looking on three days on, two days off for the week. Um, that, that's the plan I have on the table and presenting to you. Um, so basically they'll be working for 24 hours and off for 16 hours and being paid for the full week. Um, we have a series of, um, you know, as we get the buildings are now cleaned, we now have a series of projects they can do, some other deep cleaning areas, some things that's been put on the back burners at different schools. So um, we'll be we'll be looking at that. You know, I, I'm sorry, you know what, I didn't scroll down. Um, Ken, uh, Keith asked, wondering about the consistency in non-PTS teachers in years one and two. In years one, two, will step the next year, but teachers in their third year district will not advance to professional teacher status. So this is not affecting a lot of teachers. Keith, it's a, it's a good question, but basically what we want to do is that um, the spring of the third year is when basically the decision is made for um, teachers going to professional teaching status within the evaluation system. Um, and basically for those on the, on, the, on the board who don't understand that, um, we're not up to speed, I'll use the word understand, not up to speed on this is basically after you, once you get professional teaching status, um, the level of evaluation for non-renewal um, is almost the difference between the old being tenured and not tenured. Um, it becomes far more difficult for um, a school to move on um, from that teacher. So if you, um, so the idea here is that we don't have the spring to um, work out the, the, the final of, the, of that. And it's really giving those teachers an opportunity um, to have a third year again. Um, there's two ways of looking at it. One could say they're on that probation for an additional year. There's one that could look at it and say you have the opportunity to you know, move forward with that. Um, I believe that both unions um, leadership has agreed, you know, based on the number of people it's affecting um, that they agree that you know we're allowing the other steps to move forward and just that final step um, because we weren't allowed we weren't able to do that that way so that's that's the idea there um, okay so sorry i have to read and do that at the same time so um so please follow up on that one and i'll move on to the next one just to keep my mouth going here um just to ask um can you please clarify the last sentence the second is the days in which they do not work will be held against paid time off. Do they have to use their personal accumulated paid time off? Typo just fixed by um, Shelly. So gotta love the live document. If you don't like it, cross it out. No, don't do that. All right, so um, so basically, um, let me get through all the different groups and then we can go back and talk about those different groups. So that's what we're doing with custodians. So we're going to work a shift again, going to create with the social distancing plan from the state. You know, you're going to have people being in smaller groups working on things, although our sites are large enough, we can keep them away from each other. Um, but again, it's also allowing them to be home. I think there's some um, level of where I believe that the, um, you know, we got to, some equity of getting people home with their families during this time as well. Um, that's my personal preference on that. Um, but again, it's gonna be your call in the end to agree to this or not. The food staff, um, similar. They're gonna be on a rotating schedule. Um, we're still keeping everybody at work, um, but they're gonna be rotating in on different days. Um, they are preparing those breakfasts and the um, lunches and um, we're kind of rotating them through each one. Um, and for that, so they are going to be continue to receive full pay, um, and on a rotating basis coming through. Um, out of school time, 
you know, I'm going to probably have to come back to you guys at the next meeting with this. The issue with this one is out of school time is reliant on tuition coming in. Um, we will be going into, I believe, the um, number, Shelly, I think on this was 21000 over three weeks is the pay going out. Um, and and Shelly, can you please confirm that on, a, on the message board? I got a yes there. And so the problem is we don't have any money coming in. And so, um, and many uh, of our employees there are not paid, um, are not full-time employees. Um, and so it's, it's reaching a balance of, um, we do have people that are full-time or are paid uh, over half time with benefits um, that I am concerned about. You know, we wanna keep those people secured. Um, however, that is something that, um, that we have to uh, discuss later on and we'll try to get more information on that one, that one's a little bit different than the other one. <clears throat> um, the 10 month secretarial staff would not be working during school closure. Um, however, they will be paid for their normal work hours. I believe that's being, that's been modified to Shelly. Um, that's still up to, we're still discussing that because we want to rotate them in as well. Um, because as you start having equity issues between groups that work in the same office, um, every one group being allowed to stay home the entire time versus another group. I think we want to look at um, some sort of kind of keeping everybody in the loop and working. Um, I think it's also a healthy thing. Um, to, while they, as long as we're doing social distancing and keeping our spaces clean, um, you know, uh, there we are. Long-term substitutes and IAs, um, they will be treated as um, the, the teachers that they've replaced. So they will be being paid in just as the teachers are and the IAs are because they're, they're, they're contracted through the end of the year. So that just makes sense. I'm using the wrong mouse and that made me really confused. All right, the, um, and then um, the part-time staff that are, uh, that are not working during the school closures related, um, how are, will they be paid for their full hours? Um, again, that is the out of sky school um, tutors, you know, student service personnel, crossing guards, early childhood, extended day coordinator, and library media personnel. So um, right now, the, the, the thoughts on that are, um, and a bunch of questions came in, so I'll get them in a second. Um, we have to kind of iron that out. Um, I'm looking strongly at those who are work enough to receive benefits um, over, you know, over the 20 hours a week that we should continue paying and the ones under um, I know I think that we have to look at it a little bit closer because um, that's a that's a difficult decision because most people are taking that as a second job because obviously their first job is um, um, not adequate um, and so you know we're talking about um, you know taking care of people during this time but also being fiscally responsible which is a very very tough balance so um, yes so that's where we're at. Um, Questions, if you want to open up the mic for questions, just simply, you know, I guess put in, just simply put in the question and then um, then I'll direct you to go ahead and do that. And, I, and I, I'll just, if you don't mind, Ken, I'll just act like the chair here in directing people to speak on that, so. Oh, uh, in the same room with me, I got Bob Holla and Bob Decker. I'm bobbed over here. Um, he asked about the buses. I have been in, in, in touch with the uh, with Gripco Company. Um, I'm asking them, are they paying their staff? Um, the, the initial um, thought from the chairs was that you know we we are encouraging them to pay their staff during this downtime. However, you know I want to talk to them about um, you know we shouldn't be paying uh, perhaps paying fuel costs you know during this time. I mean they still have their other overhead costs and that kind of thing, but. Um, you know, I, I'm still open to having a conversation, not open, I sent them an email, we traded emails today, that's hoping I hope to tackle tomorrow. So questions on anything that's been said or comments, concerns? Um, well, we don't wanna be all talking, we do wanna have some conversation. I'm waiting for a text to come in if somebody wants to say something.
could could Shelly, you just ask a silly question just to I make sure the technology is working? Yeah, can you do it? Can you do it? Okay, so Shelly's there. Talk about learning or distance learning for kids. All right, so I sent out, uh, that's from Damien, I sent out a, uh, um, a note that we're going to be talking with the teachers tomorrow. So we're still on, we're still rolling it out. Um, but basically, it is not in place. And it's very important that we get that kind of across to parents. It is not in place of a school day. This is not like um, e learning or, you know, um, that kind of thing, even though we might be doing things on the computer. Um, it is something that we're going to, it's going to be brought down to the base level of teachers. Teachers know who, you know, is going to be able to roll out what their students can and can't do. They have a pretty good idea um, what students um, have for technology at home, what parents have for um, from email to internet, um, and kind of be reaching out. And so basically, we're kind of creating a educational, I don't want to use the word kind of social worker model, but they're going to be reaching out to parents and, and kids and, and basically saying, what did you work on today? And did you, what are you reading? And, and checking in on those kind of things and offering up activities. Um, the accountability to those activities, while we can't hold the students accountable, we know if students are being told that they don't have to do anything, they won't do anything. So we are going to probably um, try to do some um, strong encouragement that they that they continue reading and, and doing some activities at home, given a lot of choices. Um, and um, yeah, it's basically as Allison kind of just chimed in, creating the ongoing learning environment for students. If this three weeks turns into two months or the rest of the year, um, that's going to be a gap. And I think as a our mission is as educators um, and in your role in education is that we need to continue to do something at home. Um, if we were closed for the remainder of the year, um, you know what that could look like. Do we do we can we firm things up? I think we'll play that out when we reach that point. But the kind of the rollout um, as we roll this out, uh, looking at um, it's very hard talking to a computer and, and no one's there. Um, the rollout of <laughs> just for sorry to do my side note. Um, the rollout of um, different activities and how they work and that kind of thing. And I kind of said earlier. You know, there's going to be a lot of mistakes along the way. There's going to be a lot of things, of, a lot of sharing between educators of, did you try this? Did you try that? I mean, my kids have been home for, for two days now, and um, I'm sure I'll get nods from um, people who've got the kids at home. It's already old. Um, and they do want structure. They do want direction. Um, and the, the, the real difficult part is going to be providing supports for those who need more um, need more direction and more, more supports. And I'm gonna be you know, leaning on the teachers to come up with plans that can reach all learners. Um, again, it's not in place of, and it's important that I say that because um, if you, it, when you put things in place of other educational laws go into, go into, go into place such as, such as FAPE, um, which requires you know, IEP services, which are very difficult um, to roll out in your entirety, um, that kind of thing. So, um, I mean, I hope that kind of answers your question. You, you we should be receiving emails from your principals today, this evening, talking about the rollout. And then we're going to kind of roll it from kind of from bigger to smaller or smaller to bigger in the sense of going out to the teachers and they're going to pick up on those, um, pick up on those things. Um, Jessica wrote, um, I'm concerned about going forward beyond closure about community members with medical vulnerabilities who still be, who still may need to remain isolated until the vaccine is made available. This is for both staff and they use sick bank and students will they need to figure out how to educate some children like with special needs from home and how might that impact the budget i don't expect to answer tonight but hopefully we start thinking in the future you're absolutely correct um you know we were talking about going down the stretch before we close for the long week talking about students who were um with medical um who are medically vulnerable to the virus we had started to working on plans about sending them home early before the um, real inc um, encouragement to close the buildings, um, and we're gonna have to look at that. And it, it's, a, it's a new, you can use this, it's a new frontier. Um, uh, we can say that with a little bit of joking tonight, uh, but it really is, this is a, a kind of a game changer. And if this is to carry through the end of the year, um, it's unprecedented. And, and if we can stay um, creative and working with our teachers and um, 
our, all our staffs about how we move things forward. Um, I agree because if um, we don't have a, a a vaccine and the vaccine's not supposed to come until next December. Um, I mean, I know I believe in you know human ingenuity and miracles, but we can see um, that's what they're saying. It's you know twelve to eighteen months away, um, but we'll see how things unroll. Can, uh, Katie Edwards chimed in. Can some of the non-union employees be given new responsibilities to support teachers and others? Given the fluidity of the situation, perhaps principals can manage can manage by building as needed will likely be different. Um, you're, again, you've hit on the same thing that we are we are talking about. Um, well. When I say non-union employees, the first thing I was thinking about, we're, we have a lot of IAs. Um, we're trying to figure out how to use them um, in this time. So some of that is, you know, if you have ideas and you're, I tell you, I'm, I'm coming up with ideas in the strangest of places when we're around my house. But if you have ideas about how people could use, um, we'll take creativity. But we have a lot of a lot of hands right now that we have to keep keep moving. And so, you know, how are we going to use IAs? Maybe they're going to do in check-ins. Maybe we, they can do one-on-one, -on -one, this type of thing. This is, you know, a free part of our Google apps um, that we could do with students and maybe they could read to students and students could read to them. I mean, the the options are endless to our, your, our imagination on that. So you're right, Kitty, um, you know, starting there. And then our other non-union employees, um, we're already starting to, you know, we have a, a a librarian in the in the high school that we're talking with, um, who's non-union uh, librarian assistant. Perhaps she can do um, put together book um, orders because you know we start we close all the libraries, you close all the schools. Oh, new problem! How are kids going to get new books when they finish reading the one in front of them? If you guys haven't had that problem at home, I got a reader. Um, we already have that problem. So these are all new fluid problems coming forward. Um, Ken chimed in. Um, I find the elementary schools document quite comprehensive, especially given the short time frame. It to put it together, a lot of thought of evident in the document. And again, I got I got I got to hand it back over to Kim and Sarah, who did the lion's share of that, and my principals, um, who are going to all yell at me for not giving them full compliments. But there was one of those, um, thank goodness for Google and shared docs, and everybody just jumping in on that. Um, I've got a lot of initial feedback from um, the teachers that has been positive about it. They like the flexibility in it, in the sense of a lot of different ways to go. And like I said, I'm rolling it out tomorrow in this fashion with the teachers. So um, hopefully we can um, um, make them uh, uh, comfortable with what's going on. Uh, Keith chimed in, unprecedented times. Appreciate all the work and communication. It seems diligent so far. Most of the decisions and directions mirror my district. Things are changing every day. Yeah, um, yeah, it is. And you know, we are looking at a lot of what other districts are doing. Um, these, you know, we are not uh, one. There's these, uh, and that's a lot of what caused the confusion on Friday, which again is another whole kind of story. Is that all the superintendents were communicating, and there was a lot of different information out there. You know, really um, not clear guidance from the state, given the information that was out there. That kind of, I think you probably have heard about, and there's been some news, uh, newspaper, New York Times article about has even happened in other states. Um, I'm hoping the other states who are yet to take action on this. Um, learn from our mistakes and are more decisive up front. Um, other questions on this, and then I can I can roll into next steps. So um, while there's no there's no vote on this tonight, um, I will have to set up a really we can probably make it a very brief meeting on Thursday. Um, and you know what, I, I can even do, I don't know if a lot of people are working from home because this is something that we could do in the middle of the day or we can do it at night. Um, but maybe I'll do it, you know, I'll do a doodle out there and, and give the, all the times of the day and you guys can pick every time that you're available to. Um, but uh, just a quick, probably a 15 minute meeting just like this where we um, have an actual vote on there to accept the MOA draft um, that we have in front of us today. Um, hearing not a lot of um, feedback on the draft, I'm going to ask Allison to kind of proceed with the draft. If she has to, Allison and Emily to proceed with that draft moving forward as well. Emily and Allison. Just, um, um, you know what, Judy, I missed your question. I'm sorry up there because someone said I agree with Judy. Thank you for bringing me back up. Um, when school is open again this spring, will the use of PD? Days be the rest of the year be reevaluated. 
Um, yeah, I think we can probably safely, I, I want to say safely say that we will probably go full on out for the remainder of the year. That's me making an executive decision without my administrative team. So I cringe if they, you know, but I, that makes complete sense. I mean, yeah. Maybe you extend the school data longer, you know, don't, don't call me on that. See, I start getting giddy in front of this computer here. Um, yeah, so I agree with that. Darius, did you see Judy's question? No, that's what I just got. So I missed that. That's the problem, chatting and doing that. Um, any other any other questions? I got dings going around me here. Um, should we vote the work requirement as well at the next meeting? Yes, it'll be all um, all the materials I sent out to you. Um, um, you know, I even we'll probably even just do a vote in in regards to the educational program moving out. Just so that, you know. Um, you show that we show the teachers that you guys are in support of it um, that as well so we will do the the uh, non-union the unions plural um, and administrators um, those documents at the next one and i will up those will probably be updated probably um, as we kind of some of those areas um and i'll send them to you prior so you have a chance to look it over what we'll do is probably go through them tomorrow um and then send them out to you by end of day so you have some time to look through them and so on and so forth. Katie, uh, any, so if there's any questions on that, throw that in there. Katie Edwards, a lot of great work happening. Thank you, you to you and your team for all you are doing. One more thing, one more thought is to keep their regular communications to families and students so they feel they're connected to schools as much as possible during the scary time. You know what, really, to be honest with you, we are, as part of our um, accountability, so we, so basically, we're not doing um, what we're doing for teachers to communicate with us. It's being done differently at the secondary levels, we're using department heads to help facilitate just the number of teachers. And then at the elementary schools, they're going to give us kind of updates what they're working on, um, how they're communicating with families. So it's um, you know so that it is kind of transparent. And I'm going to be one of the most important parts I think of what we're doing is communicating with families and breaking this the isolation. Um, that this is going to cause. I mean, I can imagine being an only child, um, you know, and those kind of things. And I'm hoping that, um, especially um, that the teachers may be even set up, we can have a lunch chat and we can set up this kind of thing um, with students that can. And really, we're, if we can get computers into everyone's hands, um, I think that's one of our goals because that, that really is one of the um, biggest inequities within this plan if you don't have a computer it makes it a lot harder to work so we want to try to make sure we get everybody with computer access um, during the day um, as well as well as those who have to share a computer with mom mom dad or um, um, their caretaker at home um, if a lot of people are working from home all of a sudden the family computer is being monopolized by the adult and not by the student who needs it more And Bob's saying more robo, robo calls from me and that kind of stuff. Anytime there's any news change with the state, I mean, yep, they're, they're getting a lot from me right now, but you know, there'll probably be a little bit, we'll let the schools take over. And then when I get updates from the state, I'll be pushing that out, um, pushing it out to families and such. And there's a lot of moving parts. And so really as, as school committee members, you're not bothering me. If you shoot me an email that says, did you think of this? Did you do that? That kind of stuff. I'd rather be bothered than um, miss something and, um, and and hurting somebody, you know, and not hurting somebody, but you know, leaving somebody out or missing a group or um, missing out on a fantastic idea. See, Ken's kind of broken the silence. That means he wants to, you to be quiet. <laughs> Now I'm going to silence. I didn't know how you wanted to adjourn the meeting if we're going to do that. So, <laughs> well, I know there's no one running off to watch any sports, but um, we all got to see where Brady lands. Um, so, uh, yeah, hand it off to you. That's all I got, and um, I'll be uh, putting out the thing for next week. I mean, not next week, in two days. Sure. Well, I certainly want to thank everyone for um, tuning in this evening. Uh, this is a an unusual circumstance, obviously, but it's great to have the technology in place that we can stay and, and conduct uh, a meeting of this sort in our homes where it's uh, supposedly safe and uh, we'll get through this. But I, I just, I will join Katie and all the others out there in commending you and your staff on 
just an amazing response and uh, leadership as always for Frontier and Union 38. So thank you very much. Um, with that, I can say that the Union 38 joint meeting is, I mean, Union 38 meeting is closed at 5.55, 6.55, I'm sorry, p.m.